I would now like to uh, introduce Jane Pointer, who is the uh, initiator and author of Champions for Change. Uh, for those of you who remember this very special experience, uh, uh, she was also a crew member of Biosphere 2, the self-sustaining mini world where eight people were sealed for two years. Imagine that. You still have to explain uh, to me, Jane, how you survived that uh, experience. Uh, Today, uh, Jane is president of a firm that develops technologies for extreme environments and uh, president of Global Sports Alliance USA, a nonprofit organization that uh, promotes environmental education through uh, sports. Jane. Thank you. So, let's see, can you hear me? I have a loud voice. Um, so, first of all, I just need to take a few moments to, to thank a few people that really, without whom this project would not have happened at all. And first of all, thank you so much indeed, Mr. Agasaka, for uh, writing the forward for this book. I'm really honored that you were part of this project. Thank you. And of course, Eric, for your great support of this endeavor, which uh, it really wouldn't have happened without that. In, in all honesty, it wouldn't have. And Julia Hagel with the United Nations also, and David Simpson, who have been really key in helping pull this all together. Thank you so much indeed. Um, also, of course, I would like to uh, thank somebody who is missing today, Tatsuo Okada, who is the founder of the Global Sports Alliance, who, who really introduced me to the idea of bringing together sport and the environment. Um, and he could not be here with us today, which I'm sure he's very sad about, so are all of we. Uh, of us. Um, Betty Barton with Patent Bog, uh, Boggs, Patent Boggs, who uh, was a great supporter of this project. Conrad Humphreys um, with Blue Project um, in England, which is a, a, a program that promotes um, the environment through marine sports, and about which you might hear a little more from Anne, who is involved with that project. It's, it's a fantastic organization. Uh, Milbury Polk with Wings, who is here today with us. Um, she's the founder of the organization Wings World Quest, which promotes women explorers and scientists. And several of uh, their explorers are in this book as well. And Janie Miller from Octagon, who uh, was uh, also key in helping bring um, some of these people together for this book. Of course, I need to thank all of you, the athletes, because you are, of course, what this book is about. And if you had not stepped up, brought your voice to this project, it really would not have been what it is. And, and I'm thrilled that you were part of it. Thank you so much indeed, and for coming here today. I do just want to add one last note before I talk just a couple of minutes about the book itself, and that it, it's not always uh, the case that one has part of the production team of a book here. And we have Gisela Tellis, who was the editor of the book, and also Judy Arisman here today, who was the interior designer of the book. So thank you. You also really helped make this book uh, a, great, a great success. Thank you. So indeed, I was part of Biosphere 2, and this is the project, and it was a completely self-sustaining world when I lived inside Biosphere 2 um, a number of years ago, for two years and 20 minutes. And one of the experiences that I got from living inside there is that of being part of my biosphere, really an integrated part of my biosphere. Because of course we had to grow all our food, we had to recycle all our water, all our waste, all our air, everything inside there. And this recycling was particularly visible with our food. So, as I breathed out, the carbon dioxide from my breath would go into the sweet potatoes that we grew, for instance, and we grew a whole lot of sweet potatoes. We then ate those sweet potatoes, and that carbon then became part of us. We actually ate so many sweet potatoes that we turned orange, and so we literally became part sweet potato. So it was very visible and very clear to us on a daily basis that we were part of this biospheric cycle. Out here in Biosphere 1 that we all live in, as we dash about our daily lives, I think it's not nearly as clear to us. I think we really have to, it's a leap of imagination out here. Um, and so I was searching for a way to really get across this notion of us being part of this Biosphere. You know, when we're, when we're in our homes, it's very difficult to remember all of the things that are happening around the world. 
And I think some of the athletes that you'll hear from today, some of the athletes that I'm just going to talk very briefly about that were in the book, really bring home what is happening around the world. They've seen it. They've experienced it. Incredible photographs of it. This is one of my chosen sports, motorcycle racing. But <clears throat> when I first got into the sport and the environment, you know, I really thought this is a very cute idea. I mean, of course, climate affects everything. Of course, it affects sports. And it wasn't until I started really speaking to all of you and all of the stories that you have that I thought, these are incredible stories. Like Lewis Gordon Pugh from South Africa and England, who here is standing on an iceberg about to dive into the Arctic. His body temperature drops 10 degrees Fahrenheit when he does these feats and he swam across the North Pole. Now, you're not supposed to be able to swim across the North Pole. It has been frozen for millennia. Then there's also Mike Williams, who we were um, happy enough to have part of this project. Um, he is an Eskimo, and he is also a musher, and he has mushed in nine different Iditarods. Several years it has, it has had to move further north, the, uh, the start line has had to move further north because there is no snow for them to start. He of course also talks about how this is having an effect on his native peoples. He's a representative for 200 different Alaskan tribes. Their hunters fall through the ice. They even have cities that are subsiding, falling into the ocean. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary the stories that he has. And of course, they talk about how it's happening faster and faster, and in some cases happening faster than, than scientists even thought it would happen. And one of the reasons is this, it's, car it's black carbon. One of the things I've tried to do in the book is bring in some of the new science. And, and black carbon is something that we're only just hearing about now, which is microscopic particles of exactly what it sounds like, carbon, coming out of diesel engines, dirty power plants, and, and the like. And it is settling on snow and making it melt faster. That's all part of this, this process that we're seeing. Now, we had a lot of photographers um, donated a whole bunch of photos for this. There's over 100 photos in the book, and most of them were donated to the project. The last photo was by James Baylog. This is by Chris Jordan. This is two million uh, water bottles and that is what Americans used in 2007 in five minutes. Brian Vickers from NASCAR. He's a NASCAR driver. Fantastic guy. He's another of the athletes in there who's really lending his voice to the environment, to climate change. Um, there's an awful lot of interesting things happening in different sports. In, in uh, road racing, for instance, we now have the Green Le Mans that's happening. In motorcycle racing, you're having the Green League. All kinds of great things. Um, here's Jack Johnson, who you probably know him mostly as a fantastic musician. He's also a surfer. And before his music career got in the way, he was on his way to become a real star, star surfer. And he has done incredible things for the environment. Um, he gives money to the environment. He promotes. Um, it through all of his um, concerts that he has. Even his bus that he goes around in is powered by biodiesel. And lastly, I just wanted to remind us all that of course, climate change and sustainability affects everybody around the world. And not everybody equally. And uh, this is Liz Odera's students in Kenya. And here for them, the environment is a lot about clean up. It's about putting in toilets so that they don't have waste running in the streets. And we have to remember that here in the United States that, you know, what may work here for the environment doesn't work the world over. And that climate change in many ways affects people in countries like Kenya, in other parts of the developing world, more than it does us in a way because it's harder for them to adapt. Climate change is happening. This debate about belief in climate change or do you, don't, don't you believe in climate change is, is not really a valid debate. There is no belief needed. Climate change is happening and it's affecting everybody. And so one of the things that we're going to hear from the athletes that are up here are it's not all bad that's happening. There's a lot of good things that are happening and all of these people up here are involved in the solutions 
And thank you all, you champions for change. And let's hear from you now.